255 here what's up today's video is on Migar and it's time we've seen that Final Fantasy 7 Integrate is coming out next week I wanted to take a closer look at Migar and why Final Fantasy 7's Migar hit home for so many of us and this is a series I'm doing as to why when we look at Final Fantasy 7 or we play it why does it hit home so much and some of the things that I've got from many articles today, about three or four, show us some reasons why. So we're going to first start with Midgar. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, Demons, let's do this. Midgar is the capital city and power base of the Shinra Electric Power Company in the world of Gaia. It is a major location in Final Fantasy VII. Before Crisis Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, and Final Fantasy VII Remake, and also appears in the Final Fantasy VII Avid Children and Dirge of Cerebus Final Fantasy VII. Midgar is typically only seen at night, especially the topside area. So it's safe to say that Midgar is one of the most iconic locations in the Final Fantasy VII games and series. Midgar shows us many of the themes spoken of in Final Fantasy VII, such as greed, capitalism, through Shinra, the authoritarian power that the Shinra company can project, the environmental disasters that the, that the planet faces, and how new is rapidly replacing the old, displacing the lives of many people. And that's, that, that's one of the reasons why Final Fantasy VII hits home for us so much because it really does deal with a lot of the themes that we deal with in, in real life. Midgar in Final Fantasy VII has multiple sectors, all connected to the centralized Sector Zero, powered by eight giant Mako reactors that were erected by the Shinra Electric Power Company. Midgar is known as the City of Mako, rising 300 meters above ground level. The steel plates surrounding the Shinra building offer comfortable residential districts for its richer citizens. The eight sectors surround Sector Zero like a technological pizza, something intended by design. In fact, the art director, Yusuke Nora said he imagined pizza while designing Midgar for the game, and this funny design inspiration turned out transformative for the game. The pizza layout of Midgar divided the citizens. The privileged live above ground in these sectors while the underprivileged live below the city. And consistent with the pizza theme, Midgar actually features some pizza-related themes in both the dialogue and actual characters. For example, Barrett affirms the pizza connection when he calls the upper plate as a pizza in the dialogue. Below the city have the underneath the rotting pizza OST playing during exploration. Also, Midgar is led by two people named after popular pizza chains. For instance, Mayor Domino is a reference to Domino's Pizza, a popular pizza chain. Meanwhile, Deputy Mayor Hart's Japanese name is Otto, which references Pizza Hut. Again, another popular pizza chain. When Final Fantasy VII was in very early planning stages, the idea was that the game was going to be set in New York City and have the story unfold within the real world. However, this concept was changed and the idea of using a real world city eventually evolved into Midgar. But some of the New York inspirations remain, such as the pizza parallel, as New York City is famed for its pizza. Uh, but I think New Jersey has better pizza. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Given how Midgar is regarded as an undesirable city with a fractured society, you have to wonder if the designers believe New York City reflected this too. So much about Midgar has parallels to Norse mythology. In fact, as you can see right here, somebody wrote an entire book about that. So look out for a separate video on that. But for right now, here's a few things. Midgar is based on Midgard, a place that when translated means Middle Earth or world. But it doesn't stop there. There are nine plates in Midgar, just as Midgard is one of the nine planes. Midgard is cut off from the other realms by way of an impassable ocean and endless desert, and Midgar likewise separates itself by way of plates. So when the designers were trying to draw up Final Fantasy VII's Midgar in the remake, 
They said that their first step for designing Final Fantasy VII Remakes Midgar was to look at the scale of the city. They said we needed to convey the idea of realistic proportions, so an early priority was to establish things like the height and depth of the buildings. To do this, we tried out an interesting idea. We took an aerial photograph with the rooftop of Square Enix office building in Shinjuku, Tokyo at the Revy Center. We overlaid this with diagrams of Megar, with the Square Enix roof taking place of the Shinra building. This let the development staff imagine the scale of Midgar compared to real life, and they were able to use this aerial image as a point of comparison for how densely we should fit buildings together while keeping the proportions as realistic as possible. We wanted Midgar and Final Fantasy VII Remake as a whole to have a kind of jumbled together, electric and fun atmosphere. For that, we took particular inspiration from Tokyo for example, some people may already know this, but the game's wall market is heavily influenced by Shinjuku's Kabuchiko area. Additionally, the team explored Tokyo looking for odd cityscapes, strange architecture, and interesting scenery. You know, the kind of thing where you have no idea how it even ended up that way. These then got compiled into reference documents, and that was the fun part of development. I hope you enjoyed the video. So, as you go on your uh, Final Fantasy loving way, remember Deep Minds, Pizza, New York City, the slums. I made a video on Loveless. Check that out. I'll put a link there. But there's so many real life themes capitalism, the greed, destroying the planet, gentrification, replacing the old with the new, that Final Fantasy VII connects us with. That's some of the reasons why this game hits more home than we realize. Yo, this is DeepMod255, out.